Shabbat Shalom. And thank you to everybody who has joined us this evening. Thank you, Mayor Villaragosa, for being here, and Supervisor Yaroslavsky, our District Attorney Jackie Lacey. So many friends who we have been with on so many occasions who are here with us today. It's an amazing thing to see a coalition here tonight that I'm so used to seeing out there, that we as Jews are a part of when a Sikh temple is attacked, when a mosque is defaced, when others are shot and killed in a church. It's Jews who stand by with our faith brothers and sisters to say it's a safe space in your places where you worship. And you never thought that that coalition would come together and that we would need them. It's like going to sit shiva with others until that one day suddenly someone in your family dies and everyone's at your home. And you feel weak and powerless and yet you're surrounded by the love of a community and a family you too have built. So to our multi-faith partners that are here, to our friends of every background, I thank you. It's been a heartbreaking week and a half in this nation. First came the pipe bombs, some probably to some Jews because of the conspiracy theories put out there, again, that might sound new to people but draw from the oldest and most poisonous well of hatred known on this earth. Then to African American Americans who were hunted down when a gunman couldn't get in a black church, but instead went to a Kroger grocery store outside Louisville and shot a man and went into the parking lot and shot and killed a woman. That man's daughter works in Louisville City Hall with my dear friend Greg Fisher, who Antonio and I both know. His daughter was the head of race relations for the city of Louisville, only to see her father shot and killed by race hatred. And then Pittsburgh and then Pittsburgh. Somebody asked me this week, how do you feel? There's so much going on in the world. And something came out of my mouth I didn't expect. I said, I feel broken and I feel strong. And I'm not sure how I can feel both, but I do. I feel broken and I feel strong. Broken by this moment in this country and in this world and yet strong. I think we realized as Jews last week that complacency is not strength. And here we are in the city of the third most Jews in the world, in a country where we finally felt safe, a nation that felt like being at home, where you don't have to worry, where you feel secure, where you can do the things God intended for each one of us to find and to build and to create. As Heschel said, Shabbat is a time to go from the life of creation to thinking about the creation of life. And yet I asked God this last week, what happens when we go from outside here seeing a life of destruction? And then in Pittsburgh, we see the destruction of life why I'm broken, but why we must be strong. I pray to God as often as I can before I go to sleep. It used to be every night. It's a simple prayer I once shared with a rabbi. I said, I just pray, God, please bring peace to this world. And God, please bring peace to this country. I try to picture what America is. I say, God, please bring peace to California, to this state a picture where we live. And God, please bring peace to this city that we're all entrusted with and that you have entrusted me with. And I say, please bring peace to this neighborhood, and I picture the neighborhood that I live in. And then I ask God to please bring peace to this house. And then finally, I ask God to bring peace to me. When I shared this with a rabbi once, she said, I don't no, if I've ever heard somebody who does it in that order, usually the prayers start with us. We ask for peace for ourselves first, 
before we bring it out to the world. Psychology, get your act together before you can help others. We have a focus to start on ourselves. But we cannot be retreating. We cannot be walled off, because as much as complacency is not strength, either is retreating at this moment. And I think I pray for the peace of the world first, because what do we do when the world's conflict and hatred and racism makes it more and more difficult for us to find peace ourselves, when suddenly the formula has been reversed and we can't even start with our own peace just turning on the news? God, we ask you to bring peace to this world and to this country. And I ask you, my fellow Jews, to stay engaged and connected at this moment, to not retreat, but to be brave and bold and to be out in this city and in this nation and in this world. Today is the Day of the Dead in the Mexican tradition, and many of you have heard me say before, you know, I'm half Mexican, half Jewish with an Italian last name. It's a long story. <laughs> But yesterday, as the Day of the Dead started, I decided to take my daughter, Maya, who had a day off from school. I think schools pick the day after Halloween for Teacher Development Day because they don't want to see a bunch of kids high on sugar. <laughs> so she went to work with Daddy, and I took her to the Hollywood Forever Cemetery so she could meet her four great-grandparents on my mother's side. Louis and Fanny Roth. And a few graves away from that, Lewis and Leah Lifshitz, which I'm really glad is on my mom's side, or I probably wouldn't be mayor right now if I had to run <laughs> on that last name. <laughs> and we placed marigolds, which is the tradition, the Mexican tradition, that you put on that one day. You've all seen Coco, right? It's the day that you can talk to your ancestors. And all her Mexican great-grandparents are either cremated, buried in Mexico, or in other states. So it's L.A., and I mixed the traditions so that she could talk to them. So she could feel her connection to something so elemental that she could feel that this day she was beginning a conversation with who she is and her world. A friend of mine sent an email a couple days ago about her daughter's bat mitzvah. Her daughter's name is also Maya. And how she had saved up her money to give, and she wasn't sure who she was going to give that money to. But after Pittsburgh, she said, I know who we must give it to. It's to HIAS. It's to the group that helps settle and has helped settle refugees in our community for years and years and years. A group that inspired a madman to come to our holy place and to take the life of 11 brothers and sisters of ours. And as I read this email, I started crying, and I told my friend, your daughter just brought tears to my eyes and hope for tomorrow and healing that I so badly needed in my heart. And she said, when I shared this with my mother, I found out, because they were originally from South America, that that same organization had helped them settle right here in this nation, too. So God, help us heal. And remember what Rav Cook said, that in the midst of hatred, it is only a boundless love that can heal. Only a boundless love that we find as we ask for peace in this world and in this nation and in ourselves.